Barnaby Jones, starring Buddy Epson, also starring Lee Merriweather, with guest stars Bradford Dillman, Joel Fabiani, Patty McCormick, special guest star Marriott Hartley. Tonight's episode, Image in a Cracked Mirror. If I didn't see it with my own eyes, I wouldn't believe it. You're calm dans la bouche d'un canon. Calm in the mouth of the cannon, to quote Napoleon. <laughs> I'm sure he was talking about a battle, not a wedding. Yeah, he was. Waterloo. <laughs> you know, if I didn't know any better, I'd swear you had a lot of practice at this. Oh, it's the first time around. Well, got to be a first time for everything. You sure you can get along without me? I'll try, but I thank you for the encouraging words. That's what a best man is for. Hello. Hello, my love. I have a marvelous idea. Let's elope. I'll go get a ladder. <laughs> you better make it a tall one. I'm on the 10th floor. How did you manage to get to a telephone? Oh, I locked myself in the bedroom. Oh, Vanessa. Hey, Daddy, I'll be right out. I'll be right here. out. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you that I love you and I'll make you the most marvelous wife in the world. Vanessa. Oh, Daddy's waiting, honey. I love you. Bye-bye. Yes? Aren't you going to invite me in, Ben? I'm sorry. I think you've made some mistake. I don't think so. You've lost a little weight, Ben. Uh, what? My, my name is Charles, Dr. Charles Kohlmeyer. But you've gained a title. You were just an engineer when I knew you in Portland. Oh, isn't this pretty? A gift from your bride, no doubt. Do you remember what I gave you the day we were married? Madam, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about being made a fool of. I'm talking about the fact that you and I were married in Portland less than a year ago. <laughs> and that you disappeared a month later with $50,000 in negotiable bonds that belonged to me. Now, you were good, Ben. But not that good. This is incredible. I'm telling you, you're making a mistake. Oh, I made a mistake. Trusting you with those bonds. <sighs> Look, for your information, up until six months ago, I was in the jungles of New Guinea. <laughs> yes, I had been there for over a year studying the children of primitive tribes. Mm. I'm a child psychologist. Now, what is this? Is this some kind of a joke? This is no joke. You knew how hard it was to face up to the truth that you could leave me just like that. At first, I thought of going to the police, but of course, my pride wouldn't let me do that. I mean, how do you admit to your family and your friends that you've been made a fool of? So I decided to find you all by myself. Okay, that's it. I better call the manager. I looked everywhere for you, Ben. And then I remembered how particular you were about your shirts. How you had them specially made by Regala of Rome and sent to his shop in San Francisco. So I checked with the manager. And he told me that, in fact, you had recently ordered one for your wedding. The one you're wearing now, Miss Pearl. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Lisa, what is it you want? Is it the money? Oh, huh? no. You never did understand anything, <laughs> did you? It wasn't the money I wanted. It was you. I loved you. All right, then. I know we can work it out. No, no. I think it's too late for that. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go downstairs. And I'm going to find your bride. <laughs> and I'm going to tell her the <laughs> truth about you. <laughs> Lisa. Lisa. Let go of me, Ben! Lisa, I can't let you ruin this for me. Come downstairs, get out of my way! Quiet! Listen, let go of your jacket! Quiet! Whoa! Lisa! I can't breathe! Would you connect me with the luggage shop, please? Yes, this is Dr. Dr. Charles Kohlmeyer. I'd like to order a steamer trunk. Uh, yeah. Any minute now, ladies. Now, where's that future son in law of mine? Oh, he still has a few minutes. I better see what's keeping him. Oh, uh, Mr. Stevenson. Mr. Stevenson. Yeah, why not let him enjoy these few minutes of uh, peace and quiet? They may be his last. <laughs> Maybe you're right. That's fine, right here. No, I I'll do that. Yes, sir. I want you to come back here in one hour and be sure that this is sent COD, the express office in Sun Valley. Can you do that for me? I'll do it for you. Here's the address. Thank you, sir. Sir, good luck. why I'm so nervous. Well, Miss McLean, perhaps you haven't had many dealings with private investigators. You're right, Mr. Jones. This is my first time. Well, there's your answer. Well, since we've solved that, let's see if we can solve some of your other problems. You say your husband has been missing for five months. Yes, uh, he disappeared about three weeks after we were married. Did you go to the police? No. Why not? Uh, well, my husband's a lawyer, you see. He practices in Independence, where we live, and... Well, he warned me from the very beginning that his work took him away quite a bit, and that he could be gone for very long periods. Go on, Ms. McLean. Well, when I hadn't heard from him for quite a while, I... I had to go to the bank, and... I checked my safety deposit box, and my jewels were missing. How much were your jewels worth? Oh, about $65,000. Mr. Jones, I don't want to go to the police. You see, they might think Jeffrey took them. And you're sure he didn't? Well, if he did, I'm sure he had a good reason. One that I could understand and forgive. If I could just find him. Ms. McLean, what makes you feel that your husband is in this area? A picture I saw in the Independence Chronicle. It was taken here in Los Angeles, and it shows a, a man helping a woman out of a fountain. I'm almost positive that man is Jeffrey.
It must have been taken during a heat wave. You're almost positive that this man is your husband. Well, Jeffrey has a mustache and his sideburns are longer. But uh, aside from that... Mr. Jones, will you please help me find him? I love him. Would you look? <laughs> you like it? Do I like it? It's beautiful. But, but when did you find the time to do this? Well, those afternoons that you couldn't reach me, I was talking to the decorator. He promised to have it ready by the time we got back from our honeymoon. It's your wedding present. You know something? I don't deserve you. I agree 100%. <laughs> However, love is blind, and to the victor belongs the spoils. Congratulations, Charles. Thank you. I would have been at the wedding, but I hate to see a grown man cry, especially myself. We missed you. Like a dog misses fleas. No, we did, really, and you're going to have to make it up to us by coming to dinner tonight. All right? Nothing fancy, just a few close friends. Well, if you put it that way, how can I refuse? You can't. Oh, by the way, Charles, I wonder if you take a look at this case history for me. It's uh, one of my female patients, but in some ways, it's right up your alley. I am sure you'll find it interesting. Well, yes, I'd uh, be glad to. Thank you. Eight o'clock? Fine. I'll see you tonight. Good. Marshal Chapman's here, doctor. Oh, uh, just give me a moment, please. Well, honeymoon's over. Oh, no. You're wrong, doctor. It's just beginning. Don't be late. Okay, honey, good. Hold it. Good. Give me some more profile. That's good. Good. Terrific. Good. A little bit more. That's good. Come toward me. Good girl. Good. That's it. Hold on to that. Good. Oh, that's wonderful. Hold that, hold that. Work on that, work on that. That's good. That's fabulous. Okay, honey, let's go. Why don't you get out of that shimada, hmm? Interesting the way they take all those poses. Hi, Mr. Jones. That's Hi. why they're called models. Why do they look so angry? Well, this is high fashion. The more expensive the outfit, the angrier the model. I guess the way this young lady is smiling, this bikini must cost next to nothing. Oh, is this the photograph you wanted to see me about? Yeah, the paper said you took it. Yeah, that's right. Not bad, huh? Seems she had this impulsive urge to cool off. And you just happened to come by with your camera. <laughs> well, okay, it was posed. What about the man? No, no, that part was impulsive. He just stepped out of the crowd and gave her his hand. Oh, and you know who he was? Never saw him before. Could he have been a friend of the model? <laughs> it's very possible. They usually have a lot of friends. If I wanted to find her, how would I go about it? Well, you could try Bernice's modeling agency. Just show Bernice the picture. Thanks. <laughs> it was a perfectly marvelous honeymoon, except for the night that Charles sneaked out on All right. Oh, he said me. he was going away on business, but I don't think he just got tired of my company. He was gone for nearly four hours. Yeah. You better explain yourself, Charles. Well, <laughs> there was some mix-up no, at, uh, no? at the express office about a piece of luggage that I had sent up. Look at Charles. And you know, on the way back to the lodge, I managed to get the car stuck in a snowdrift. I nearly froze to death trying to shovel that thing out. Oh, no wonder she doesn't believe you. Where did you find a shovel, Charles? Why, it was a rental car that was uh, shoveled in the trunk. Oh, <laughs> it's the truth, so help me. You believe me, don't you, darling? Oh, yes. <laughs> sure. You spare a few minutes, Charles? Yeah, sure, come on, we'll go in the den. Why don't we toast our lovely hostess? Oh, thank you. Fisty. Charles, I was hoping you had time to look over that case history I left you. Yes, I did. And I found it very interesting, too. David, would you like a cigar? Uh, no, thank you. I've been seeing her for almost three years now. And as you saw in the report, she's made excellent progress. Yes, she has. Excellent. And yet, I just can't seem to help her over this terrible fear she has that someone's going to take her child away from her. Now, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. The child? No, no, the woman. But, Charles, I know you must be familiar with the work of your friend, Leslie Krebs. 
Hmm. Yes, yes, of course. And you buy Krebs' theory of the parent-child relationship? No. No, I don't. Not totally. And uh, I've even told him that. However, I think that in time, Krebs is going to uh, alter his attitude toward adolescent compensation. He's going to. Sure. Krebs is dead. No. No, I, I didn't know that. Uh, that must have, uh, must have happened while I was in New Guinea. But you were in New Haven last spring, weren't you? I was, but, uh, well, that's when it happened. Krebs died in April. Now, surely you must have heard. I, I understood the two of you were very good friends. I, I was out of touch for a few weeks, uh, preparing for my return, but, uh, no, I, I, I just can't understand how I missed it. I don't either. Well, it's sad. However, uh, David, I think uh, you and I ought to go back and join the others. One must not ignore a new bride. That's the first law of marital psychology, Doctor. You're an actress. How did you know? Did you see me in Feet of Death? I'm afraid I missed that one. Oh, that's too bad. I had a featured part in that one. I played a karate expert. That's why I like to keep in shape. You know, you never know when a good part's going to come along. Are you in the business? I'm in the private detective business. My name is Barnaby Jones. Oh. Well, um, what do you want to see me about? The man in this picture, uh, you a friend of yours? Oh, yeah, Chuck. Sure, I remember him. Chuck. You don't have to remember his last name. Um, Dickens. Chuck Dickens. Chuck Dickens. Well, that would make his Christian name Charles. Charles Dickens? Hey, yeah. That's the same as that famous inventor, isn't it? Charles Dickens was a writer. Screenwriter? Now, I think uh, he had his work done by the time the movies came along, but a couple of his books made it. Oh. I knew he was in show business. What, uh, what does Chuck do for a living? Well, uh, he was the kind of guy that asked a lot of questions. But he didn't give many answers. <laughs> It's funny how much he learned about me, but I swear I hardly knew him. Have you seen him lately? No. Not, not after that day at the fountain. We had lunch, and then he took me home, and that was it. <laughs> to tell you the truth, he did ask to see me again, but I turned him down. Any particular reason? I had a feeling he was conning me, and he was really married, even had children. What makes you say that? Well, on the way back to my place, we stopped at this toy store in Beverly Hills, and he picked up a whole bunch of toys. Now, who else do you buy toys for except for your children? Remember the name of the toy store? No. I mean, who bothers to remember the name of a toy store? Oh, excuse me. I'm expecting a call from my agent. Yeah? Huh? Oh, yeah. Just a minute. It's for you. Sorry. Thanks. Yes? Burnaby, you have no idea the number of legal organizations I've contacted trying to locate Mr. McLean, including the Bar Association and about a dozen attorney referral services. I struck out with every one of them. I believe you, Betty, but I also have the feeling that you've located them. Well, we are what we read, Barnaby. And lawyers read the uh, American Legal Journal, including Jeffrey Allen McLean. I contacted their subscription department. They gave me his address. It's in Phoenix, Arizona. Book me on the first flight out to Phoenix. I'll see you in a few minutes. Hey, 
did. I was at the bar and I saw you sitting here. Well, I I'm having lunch with Charles. Please sit down. Well, just for a minute. Well, uh, here's to happiness. <laughs> That's the saddest toast to happiness I think I've ever heard. Something wrong? I don't know. Vanessa, what do you know about Charles? He's my husband. Yes. But what do you really know about him? I mean, up until a few months ago, you didn't even know he existed. Well, you hadn't introduced me to him yet. I didn't know him myself until he moved into the building. And if I thought you were going to fall in love with him, I wouldn't have introduced you at all. Oh, David, that's what's bothering you. <laughs> Maybe that's part of it. Now, there's more, though. Listen, from everything I've been able to learn, Charles was devoted to his research on the primitive children of New Guinea. Now, he used to go into the jungle and stay there for years at a time. So? So why this sudden change? From a jungle in New Guinea to a fancy office in Beverly Hills, treating children whose idea of roughing it is camping out in the backyard next to the pool. Now, it doesn't make sense. Maybe I can explain it to you, David. Hi. Hi. I'm sorry I'm late. No. It's okay. We are having a terrific time here. <laughs> oh, say, would you bring me a scotch and soda? Anyone else? No. Okay. Now, to answer your question, David, it's really quite simple. After 10 years of living in the jungles of New Guinea, I thought it was time to go to work. Time to put my theories to the test. You know yourself, research doesn't mean a thing unless it's got some kind of practical application. And I'm here to tell you that a lot of the things that I learned from my so-called primitive children have proved invaluable with my more civilized patients. As for the uh, fancy office, <laughs> well, after spending um, all those years in a thatch hut, I thought I'd like to see how the other half was living. I should have known better than to ask. Touche. And enjoy your lunch. Mm. I think I detect a severe case of jealousy. Oh, that's a brilliant diagnosis, Doctor. I don't think it's fatal. By the way, I've got a surprise for you. We've been invited to a very fancy dinner party next week. Oh. They're the parents of one of my young patients. Now, they're very socially prominent, so you're going to have to go out and buy yourself a brand new dress for the occasion. Oh, well, you don't have to trust my oh, okay. arm. If you want, I can even flaunt my fancy heirloom necklace. What necklace? The one my grandmother gave me. I will. The next time I'm in town, I'll go to the safety deposit box. Sure, if you like. Well, why not? So my grandmother said, what's the point of having a $300,000 emerald necklace if you can't flaunt it? Uh, uh, you decided what you'd like to order? I haven't had time to look. <laughs> well, I know what I, what I want. Excuse me, uh, but uh, I'm looking for a Mr. McLean, a uh, lady up the house that I find him down here at the stable. Yeah, I'm McLean. Oh, uh, Jeffrey Allen McLean? That's right. McLean, I'm looking for as a lawyer. Well, <laughs> so far you're batting a thousand, only I'm a lawyer turned cowboy. I haven't practiced in several years, and my ulcers haven't missed a single day of it. Come on. You practice in Independence, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, about 100 miles from there. A little place called Eastfield. What's this all about, anyway? My name is Barnaby Jones. I'm a private investigator. I was uh, hired to locate a man named Jeffrey Allen McLean. Yeah? But you're not the right one. What do you mean, just a coincidence? Whole barrel full of them. Thank you. You, uh, familiar with the man in this picture? Well? I'm not sure. There's something about this guy, though. And there was a guy. Now, but this other fellow had a mustache, and he had longer sideburns. About a year ago, a guy approached me. He wanted me to buy, oh, some oil stock. His name was Fillmore. And I remember this guy. Because the stock looked pretty good, you know? But there was just something about him that, I don't know, just didn't. 
Uh, what particular way? Well, I don't know. Just a feeling I had about the guy. He was just too friendly. You know what I mean by that? Uh, he was very curious about my background, about my personal life. You know, he just asked a lot of questions. Kind of like you there, Mr. Jones. That's all in a day's work. What kind of questions did he ask you? Like some water? No, thanks. Uh, for the most part, he wanted to know about my law practice. Where did I practice? Uh, he wanted to know when I practiced. If I still had any associations back there, that sort of thing. That's very interesting, because about a year ago, a man of the same description started a law practice in Independence under the name of Jeffrey Allen McLean. Is that right? Well, that explains that. Explains what? You want to hear something funny? A few nights after I turned this guy down, somebody broke into my den one night. They take anything? Yeah. They stole a gold pen and pencil set, and I had a pistol on the wall, a little antique pistol. They got that. But they got a couple of things that I couldn't understand why anybody would even be interested in. Your law school diploma. That's exactly right. That and a certificate to practice law in the state of Missouri. You know, I can't tell you how much Jim Jim has improved since you've been coming to see you, Doctor. He's so much more confident now and he doesn't get into fights anymore. I'm just standing in patience, Mrs. Rumford. I just sit and listen. Believe me, Jim Jim does all the rest. You know, you're too modest. Well, perhaps I make a suggestion now and then. After all, I have to do something during my fee. <laughs> Jim, Jim, come here. Jim, Jim, come here. Well. Goodbye. It's been a long day. Yes, for both of us. Why don't you go on home? I'll just put this back on your desk. What is it? Your diploma. Dr. Bellman stopped by today while you were out to lunch and wanted to know what university you graduated from. I wasn't sure, so I checked your diploma. Did he say what he wanted to know for? No, but I didn't think you'd mind. Oh, of course not. See you tomorrow. Good night. This is Dr. David Bellman. I'd like to speak to the Dean of Men. Oh, uh, yes, I'll wait. Hello. Oh, he's not. Well, do you know what time he will be there? I see. Well, I wanted to talk to him about a past student of his there, uh, Dr. Charles Kohlmeyer. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, I see. All right. I'll, uh, I'll call back in the morning, then. Your interest in me is most flattering, David. I'm just a little curious. Curious? About what? Whether you're for real or not. I'm for real. But you're not Charles Colmar. That much I'm sure of. What's in a name? Who are you? Anything that benefits me to be. Engineer, stockbroker, lawyer, child psychologist. But I keep forgetting, David, you wouldn't understand that, would you? Because you've spent your whole life becoming one thing. I believe it's called dedication. I have my dedication too, David. This the good life. Having the best of everything. Leaving the leftovers to people like you. How long did you think you could get away with this? Long enough to get what I wanted. 
then move on to greener fields. You know, in the course of my travels, I met the real Charles Kohlmeyer. Uh, oh. <laughs> was he tall? All he could talk about was going back to his beloved jungles. He even told me when he was leaving and when he was going to be back. And I thought, well, since he isn't going to be using civilization for two years, why not use it for him? Europe. I'm a very sick man. Wrong! I just listened to a different drummer. And David, I can't let you change any of that for me. My name is Dr. David Bellman. There's been an accident. I drove my car on the road. Nichols Road. Nichols near a sunrise crest. Get me an ambulance. Please. Hurry. Please. Looks a little bit like my cousin Fred back in Tennessee. That's after he's gotten into Cousin Buell's corn liquor. You say so. Something I can help you with? Well, I certainly hope so. i uh, about to run out of toy stores. Ever seen a man in this picture? Why? 
Well, I'm a private investigator, and a loving member of his family hired me to locate him. Seems they lost touch. Looks a lot like Dr. Kohlmeyer. Dr. who? Dr. Kohlmeyer, the child psychologist. He buys toys here to keep in his office for his patients. Would you happen to have his address? Sure. He has a charge with us. Yeah, here it is. 3722 Armand Drive. I can't believe it, Charlie. I mean, we, we just saw him yesterday. I know what you mean. According to the papers, he managed to call an ambulance, and maybe if those people had gotten there sooner. I don't know. You know, sometimes I think that life in the jungles is a lot safer after all. Dr. Kohlmeyer, there's a gentleman to see you, a Mr. Jones. Did he say what he wanted? No, sir. Listen, why don't you try to get some rest? Okay. That won't be long. Dr. Colmar, I'm Barnaby Jones. I feel kind of like the football player that ran 80 yards for a touchdown in the wrong direction. What is it you want? Well, uh, I'm a private investigator, and I was uh, hired to find a missing husband. Uh, I see. Uh, well, what has that got to do with me? Well, my client saw this picture in the paper, and she thought, uh, uh, well, that is you in the picture, isn't it? Yes, but, uh, but you're not my client's husband. That's what I mean when I speak of running the wrong way. My client's husband's name is Jeffrey McLean. He's a lawyer from Independence. Then why are you here talking to me? Well, mostly to satisfy my client. You see, she's almost positive that uh, the man in the picture and her husband are one and the same. <laughs> well, I can assure you, Mr. Jones, she's very mistaken. Well, that's what I tell her. But uh, were you ever in Independence, Doctor? No, no, I'm afraid not. And I'm certainly not a lawyer. I'm a uh, child psychologist. And before moving to Los Angeles, I spent uh, most of my time on the East Coast and in New Guinea. However, if you'd like some uh, proof of that. Oh, no, no, that wouldn't be necessary. Well, then, if you have no other questions, Mr. Jones, I'm really very busy today. Well, thank you. I understand. And uh, I'm sorry you've taken up so much of your time. We all have our jobs to do. Going inside? Thank you. I'll order in a few minutes, too. Jeffrey? Oh, I've missed you so much. Jeffrey, I, I'm, I'm afraid that there's uh, been some mistake. I, I was so worried about you. I kept thinking that worst possible things had happened to you. An accident, or, or maybe you were dead? Ma'am, I, I think you got me confused with someone else. Jeffrey, you remember the night you asked me to marry you? No, no, I don't. No, my, my name's Charles. <laughs> remember, you, you promised to love me and, 
and, and to take care of me for the rest of my life. And, and I said, that's a better deal than I had just gotten on my new car. <laughs> and we laughed. Jeffy, you, you, you made me feel so beautiful. You made me feel so wanted. I, d I don't know what to tell you, Mrs. Uh... McLean. Angie McLean. No, I'm your wife. Shh. Well, uh, do you really believe that, Mrs. McLean? <laughs> what? Now, look at me. C can you be certain that I'm your husband? Do we have the same face? Or, or the same eyes or the same hair? <laughs> do we act the same? Well, I'm very sorry, Mrs. McLean. You're a pretty woman and you flatter me, but... On my honor, I'm not, I'm not your husband. I've never seen you before in my life. Is that your husband in the restaurant? I... I think so. Would you swear to that in court? You may have to. He, he seems so different. Miss McLean, would you swear that was your husband? No. Vanessa, where have you been? I've been calling all over. Well, I I've been shopping. I just got home. Is something wrong? Well, something's come up. I uh, have to go to New York this afternoon. Oh, why? Well, there's a, uh, there's a convention of psychologists there. I, I wasn't going to go, but one of the speakers became ill and they asked me to take his place. I don't know. I, I suppose it's uh, quite an honor. Well, how long will you be gone? Uh, the convention lasts a week, but Vanessa, I'd like you to come with me. Ah, uh, you've talked me into it. Good. We'll probably be going some uh, very nice places. You want to take along your best things? I, I was just on my way to pick up my necklace. Good. I, I tell you what, I have some work to do here. So why don't you pack our suitcases? I'll meet you at the airport, and you can pick up the necklace on the way. All right, what time shall I meet you? The plane leaves at 4, Global International. I'll be there. I love you. Love you, too. Here's our marriage license, Mr. Jones. Good. I will be able to see how the McLean signature on the license compares with the Kohlmeyer signature that Betty got from the toy store. Well, Betty, mm -hmm. maybe I better have a talk with the Kohlmeyer maid. Why don't you call and find out when is her day off? Are you going to use your charm to find out the family secrets? Just make the call. Yes, sir. He was obviously trying to disguise his handwriting. But there are similarities in these two E's. Same height, same slant. That proves he's my husband. Well, I'm no expert, but I know where I can find one. Barnaby, I just talked to the Kohlmeyer maid. Yes? Well, according to her, Charles Kohlmeyer is scheduled to leave for New York on a 4 o'clock plane. What about his wife? She left 15 minutes ago to be with her husband at the airport.
<laughs> What's that boarding call? We have plenty of time. Besides, it's kind of nice to rest after running around like crazy all day. Did you get that from your safety deposit box? Do you think I'd forget it? You want to see it? Flight 361 to New York City may now board at gate 12. That's us. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Charles Kohlmeyer, please come to the white courtesy phone. Mrs. Charles Kohlmeyer. Let's pretend we didn't hear. But we have time. It may be important. Vanessa. This is Mrs. Kohlmeyer. Dad. Oh, I'm so glad you got my message. I just wanted to say goodbye and to thank you again for a wonderful time. Looks like we timed it just about right. Yes. Uh, yes, my plane leaves in just a few minutes. See, it's just a coincidence. Come on, let's go. Oh, Dad, I love you, too. Yeah, I'll write you from New York. Vanessa. Bye-bye. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, sorry to bother. Are, are you Mrs. Kohlmeyer? Yes. Oh, that's funny, because that's our name, too. Really? Could we be related? Well, perhaps. Uh, my husband's name is Charles Kohlmeyer. Well, it certainly is a small world. Hey, come on, dear. We'll miss the plane. He, he's a doctor, a child psychologist. He's flying in from New Guinea to meet me in New York. Charles? It's really very funny. Who put you up to this? No, well, I'm not joking. I, he does research there with, with children from primitive tribes. Actually, we were just married there uh, a few months ago, and, and we didn't have much time for a honeymoon, so we're going to make up for it in New York. <laughs> Betty told me I'd find you here. Yes. I, well, we thought we'd get together and talk. We, we seem to have so much in common. Mr. Jones, did you learn anything about him? Yeah, quite a bit. Uh, his real name is Stanley Rickland. He uh, spent some time in prison about seven years ago. While he was there, he worked as an orderly in the psychiatric ward and also spent a great deal of time reading books. Uh, books on psychology and law. Were there, um, were there others? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Going from Portland, her maiden name was uh, Lisa Howard. They found her buried in the Sun Valley. He admitted to murder. You two are the lucky ones. 